Do you think, looking in your monitor, that I should wear shades? Yeah, about why is there so many kinds of weird music all put together on this album? That's, uh, is that the way uh, you want to put it? Yeah. yeah. And on your other music as well. True, true. You, you use all kind, different kinds of styles. Yeah, that's... The only reason we do that must be because it's the only way to make the music interesting because it, you don't want to go where they've already plowed the field. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a new field in order to create in. Mm -hmm. And that's why one of the ways through is, is to not be afraid to mix styles or go through and be influenced by styles and have an open mind to music. That's one of the ways where you can make it interesting. Because first we make it interesting for us mm -hmm. and we hope that therefore it will be interesting to the listener. But first we make it interesting for us. You've done it all your life. You've done it as well on the, the Clash album. Yeah. You, you look at it uh, all your life. This way. Yeah. Ha. Ha ha. You can't give me any of these questions where I can answer you with a yes or no. <laughs> um, that's true, I have. I mean, I can't think of anything to add there. You can cut that out if I can't think of anything. In the lyrics on your, on your album, you... Uh, the fans will be relieved to notice that you're still politically very much involved. You're a radical person, you're social and political, you're very, very radical. Yes. Come, why, why is that? Well, I, I don't really think so. I'm probably a more, I'm probably exactly like every other person. And I'm not a particular expert or a freak in any given area. What I mean is like, Say Bono can meet the Pope, and he's got that world statesman-like ability to his personality. I think that fits his role mm -hmm. in the world. And in Britain, say Billy Bragg, the singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. his personality fits his from very active activist Labour Party heritage. Mm -hmm. And when I think about this question, and I, I think about it, and I realise compared to them. I'm a different kettle of fish altogether mm -hmm. and I operate exactly at my right level because I've had time to figure it out what it is that I do and why I should do it or how long I should keep doing it or you know I figured out that I'm doing the correct thing because you, you can only complement your own personality by the things that you do and if you get in the wrong groove like every, you know in the wrong rut like people leave the job because it doesn't suit them and it's the same in any with anybody it's the same with me and I I feel more like a normal person in that I don't really feel like a some big shot political thinker or or anybody who knows the details really about anything you know I feel as dumb as everybody else. But you say this album is a manifesto of hope. I read that somewhere. Okay, okay. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Um, we have made a hopeful record, okay? Mm -hmm. So. Where's the hope in the record? The hope is in its overall effect is uplifting. When you put that record on, you buzz upwards and you don't mm -hmm. buzz downwards. And that it. It's one of the first things we set out to do, is to end up with this effect of. Mm -hmm. There's too many downers in life t to make a some miserable hangdog record that would bring everybody down that ever listened to it. Obviously, I've got many records in my collection like that, and I enjoy them all. But that's again back to what I said just now. You cut your thing according to the shape of your personality, because then it it'll be a a successful project because it fits and so I'm the eternal optimist you know if ever there was an optimist from central casting I'm the man for the job how come you become such, such an optimist no um the world would be one. yes I think maybe you get born optimistic or born pessimistic 
But there is a saying, isn't it? He's a born optimist. You're 25 years or so you're in the business now. How come you still have this, this, this uh, radicalness, this, this hope, uh, hopefulness? Well, How come you, you, don't, you don't get bored with everything? Because I'm enthusiastic. And enthusiasm comes from interest. So I must have some sort of... I've got a colossal interest in the world and that makes me enthusiastic about the smallest detail. Um, for example, a couple of years back, myself and a, a guy in New York who did this cover, Josh Shears, me and him were in, in the bar, in, in the back of a bar in the um, gents, and we were going like this. When a guy, another guy came in and he found us going this. I can't look at it. I can't believe it. Look what it says. And we were enthusing about this 1940s hand dryer mm. that was still happened to be bolted to the back wall of some bar in the back of New York. And we were enthused about, you know, even the tiny manufactured by Sunso Industries, you know, in Ohio or whatever, and, and the typeface on the sticker and the shape of the machine. And, and this guy went, what the hell are you guys doing? And that's when I realized that we were probably slightly cracked, me and Josh, mm -hmm. but it was good crack, uh, good enthusiasm, you know, it was good insanity that we were enthused about this cruddy old bit of iron bolted on a wall. But that's the kind of thing that you can build lyrics from. Because something intrigues you about something. And that's, that's the beginning of, that's your way into to getting an idea. It's also the reason why you use all these different kinds of music. You're so interested in details. And I think so, but... Influences from all over the world. I think so, but I can't take the credit, really, for that from the musicians here on, on this record, because it's really their expertise and it's really their choice to, to, to play, to bring those riffs to it. And the reason it sounds interesting or, or good, or to my ears, is that all of these guys are, are, are really great players and they've all got to the point where they're playing wilder and wilder things because all the normal things have been covered so it was when we put five or six of these guys together all doing that at once that we, f we finally get something that we like that turn that gives us a buzz so I would say the credit for that really must go with, with the Mescaleros here Is it also the reason for the title Global Agoga? -Go? Well, I called it that because I thought it would sell more copies. <laughs> Why is that? It sort of sounds exciting, you know. You don't want to call it world music. Well, I didn't even think like that because it's the name of a track which is about mm -hmm. a global radio station and, and everything in the world. So, somebody suggested, well, we could use that for the title of the album. Um, but when I wrote it on a bit of paper to look at it, I thought, hey, that sounds like exciting, you know, global a go go. You know, thinking of someone in a record shop looking at it, going, what's this? Global a go go. And you think, to me, it, it looked like it, it would encourage them to buy it, but it doesn't say something less interesting. It's tough to think of names for, for records, mm -hmm. it can drive you up the pole. Somewhere you said, to write a good song, you need to be half madman and half genius. Mm. Can you explain it for me? Okay. I kind of realized that. We've got a song on here called Bindi Baji. And it's, a, it's an attempt at a, a song, a celebration of, of multicultural melting pot. Anyway, so I'm figuring what the words are and it's four o'clock in the morning and I'm down in the downstairs studio there's no one using it they all gone home so I was just using that as a as a writing room while uh, upstairs we were recording and I was going round and round this table 
when I realized what I was doing, I was doing this before I thought about it, right? I was doing this. Hums, kus, kus in the juice of octopus. Hums, kus, kus in the juice of octopus. And I stopped, and I went, my God, I'm a grown man. It's four in the morning in an outlying suburb of London, and I'm walking around around this table for ten minutes going, hummus, couscous, in the juice of octopus. And that's when I realized you've got to be half mad to, 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 to try and write a decent tune. Sounds like a good recipe, though. Huh? Sounds like a good recipe. Well, I, yes, I hadn't thought of it like that. But you see what I mean, though? Yeah. It's, it ain't normal behavior. So that accounts for the being a half of an idiot about it. And to get a bit of genius into it, that's the moment, a fleeting moment when you get the idea. Writing a lyric is just like filling it in, really, but it's thinking of what to write about. That's the moment of, of fleeting spark. You know, I wouldn't call it genius, but spark of inspiration, call it. And just, that's the most difficult bit. It doesn't come easy to you, still. I don't think it can come easy because it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Because it's easy to write a song about the wrong thing, or maybe a lot of Duff songs are it's the subject that's probably letting it down, not the way it's written or how it's rhymed or anything in it. So it's just figuring out a unique idea. That's what's difficult, because there's been so many thousands of other people thinking, you know, since the 30s. Can you imagine all the songwriters in Timpan Alley going, so you're in a crowded field and you, you've got to think, you've got to think hard to make it worth it for everybody, you know. I think this is, um, this compares to anything I've ever recorded, yeah. yeah, I think so, yeah. Which is a big claim, I admit, but I'm as pleased with this and than I've ever been. And also because of the way it was recorded, with, with all, all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. That's an extra sort of... And it was a pleasure to record. I think you can hear it in the record that everything flowed mm -hmm. like honey. And you can hear it in the record. Do I feel like it? Yeah. I tell you, to make this record break even, we're going to tour until that record breaks even because then you get another roll of the dice, you with me? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't break even, the record company's gonna lose enthusiasm rapidly, mm -hmm. yeah? And I got a big up epitaph here because Rock Art and the X-Ray Style didn't break even, so normally we should be out, out the door. So and that's, a, that's showing faith, mm -hmm. which is kind of getting rare in, in the recording industry. Maybe years ago they had a bit more sus to, to follow artists through. You're not so very enthusiastic about the recording industry these days. Um, well, it, it just gets more ruthless, but they probably throw away a lot of artists just because their first recording didn't, didn't make it big, you know. People get slung out immediately, and if you took that rule all the way back, probably everyone would have got sacked, and there would have never been any great artists. And touring never gets boring still after 25 years? No, because you've got something as long as you've got something new to work with, to say, and to the play. Fans, the, fans. the fans, well, it's always a joy to play music to people. You know, I've been doing it since 71. 30 years. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. My pleasure, guys. Will you stop smoking in the back, please? <laughs>